All right. So thank you guys for coming to this meeting. And so this meeting that we have going on today, all of you are pretty much in the top 40 of the junior class, except for one person on here. We have a special guest, but all of you guys are in the top 40 of the junior class. And so I have you guys in here early because of the fact that um, we normally don't start meeting with juniors probably until about March or May or April. But um, you guys are going to have scheduling to begin very soon. You're going to um, hopefully take the PSAT. You should begin registering for the SAT and the PSAT. I'm sorry, the SAT and the ACT, and then just getting ready for senior year. And so mostly um, getting ready for senior year is making sure that your GPA is solid because whatever GPA you come in with um, during your senior year um, is pretty much what you're going to have. And so with that being said, you guys will be um, needing to start looking into scholarships much, much earlier. OK, and so you will need to make sure that um, that you start doing some research. And so I want you guys to do what the other classes that we ask to do every single year. I would like you guys to do this. I would like you to be proactive and start searching and researching scholarships on your own. And I have a couple of lists in a Google Classroom that I'm going to share with you later that you can start with. But we're not waiting until colleges give you money. You need to come with your own money to take it to each school that you are thinking of going to. Because when colleges award you money, it's, it's going to be tied to that particular school. OK, so you want to get as much money as you can get on your own and take it with you. And so you guys, your grades are high. You've been working really hard. And so now you want to put the GPA that you have and work it to your advantage. And so one of the things that I want you guys to do is I want you to shoot for the stars. I want you to feel confident enough to start applying for some of these bigger and national scholarships that are available. Some of you guys, especially in classes before, and this is a nationwide issue, they won't apply to some of the bigger scholarships because they have what we call um, imposter syndrome, where they feel that they're not you know worthy of getting something or you know i'm not going to get one of those things well when they have those national scholarships they have a number of people who win them and somebody always gets this scholarship right somebody always gets the scholarship and so why can't that person be you all right and so i want you to really focus on that so i'm going to change the view on my screen because i do have a special guest um, with us today and so I have Miss Beatrice Alcala Cincion from the class of 2020. And Beatrice won the Quest Bridge Scholarship, which is a national scholarship, um, the application that she filled out. 18,500 students applied for this scholarship. And she was one of 1,464 students that actually received this scholarship. So she was one of those people that you hear about. So now you know her. And she's the third person in a row, three years in a row, that we've had someone win this scholarship. So last year, it was Basima Curry. She's at Colorado College. And the year before that, we had Leo J. Toussaint. And he is at the University of Chicago. And so I'm not going to talk a lot about it because Beatrice is here um, and she will be attending Princeton University. And this award is a full tuition scholarship. It's full room and board. They get stipends, travel expenses, no loans. And some of the schools um, will actually give you money for your books and fees. All right. So Beatrice is going to pop on. She's going to tell us a little bit about the program and about herself. And then I'm going to ask her a couple of questions and also give you guys an opportunity to ask her questions, too. So, Miss Beatrice, are you here? I am. All right. I, so let um, me see. 
keep talking. I'm gonna try to figure out why you're not showing up on the screen. Okay, that's weird. Okay, um, I can see her. Maybe it's just Miss Mitchell's. Like, yeah, maybe. I can see her also. Okay, yeah, I can see and hear her. So, I don't all right, know. well, we'll get Beatrice. <laughs> um, so the Questbridge scholarship, it's not necessarily a scholarship from like the Questbridge, which is an organization. It's a scholarship through the colleges, but Questbridge kind of helps them um, like have a smaller pool of students to choose from. So Questbridge allows you to apply to, has 49 partner schools, meaning that those schools are like willing to give students full like ride scholarships. And the Questbridge application allows you to apply to I think it's like 12 colleges, um, like once you become a finalist and say you don't get matched to it, meaning like no school accepts you and gives you a scholarship, you can like reapply to those schools. So it gives you like a second option, like it gives you two tries basically to apply to whatever like partner schools they have. Um, and all those schools are like, they give you 100%, or is it like 100% like financial aid? I don't know the exact terminology for it, but mm -hmm. say you don't like match with them, they'll still give you a pretty good like financial aid package. Uh, however, the application is really, really long and you have to start working on it in like August. So I was lucky enough to have someone who kind of like helped me with it. Um, and it's like another program, it's called College Point and um, they like assign you an advisor and they kind of help you kind of lead you through through certain like applications and are there like whenever you need any questions. So I started working on it in August. Um, and then I, because once you get into like school, like the beginning of the school year and you have to start like uh, managing your workload, it gets really difficult to like write essays when you have to turn in like an uh, English essay or when you have like biology exams to study for. So it gets like, the workload is really difficult. So if you are applying to the scholarship, I would definitely start early um i think you can actually i don't know if it's open it's usually open at the beginning of august so look out for that and yeah so what made you decide to apply to the scholarship i remember miss mitchell like mentioned it and i knew that some of us well, like two of our students had actually won it so i decided um to like, just try it out and see how it went so can you um Tell us what the process of the, the application process is. Like, what are the major steps of it? Um, it has, well, the application itself is, is very, is very like easy to like look through. It gives you a lot of like different, like, I guess you could say like tips. Um, but like the first thing is determining whether or not you're eleg eligible, eligible for it. Um, and there are like some key things, but of course, like it all depends. So it's not like super strict. Um, I know some of the bigger ones are like your like like family income and number of family members. But again, that doesn't really matter as long as you kind of explain that are like flexible with those things. And then afterwards, once you're like determined that you are eligible for it, you start, there's like a main application. There's two essays. And of course, there's like tax return forms from your parents and like things like that, FAFSA as well. Okay. And so what would you say is like, was the hardest part of the application process? I think the hardest part was definitely writing the essays and like the short answers like although they're like short answers you still have to like try to fit the, the word limits and make sure that you're like answering the questions correctly or like to the best of your ability mm -hmm. so um so again there is a criteria for the scholarship you have to have a a, not a set GPA, but they have a range. And I'll, I'll show you guys that later because Beatrice does have to go somewhere else. That's why I have her on here at the beginning. Um, so there's a, a, a criteria for test scores, GPA. There's a financial criteria. And then they also look at your transcript to see what types of classes that you have. And we'll go over that a little bit later. So now that you won this scholarship and it's all over, how do you feel about winning it? Um, it's very relieving. Like you mentioned before, like imposter syndrome syndrome is like definitely a thing where it's like um, a little like hard to believe. And it's kind of like so surreal because it's just very like relieving because I just have to focus on like schoolwork and that's pretty much it for the rest of my senior year. 
Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So what is your family? How's your family feeling about it? Oh, they're very proud. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so if you could give anybody any tips about, you know, applying for this scholarship or any other scholarships, this will be the, probably the last question I'll be asking you. What tips or advice can you give the class of 2021? Um, I would definitely say don't wait to the last minute. Um, you need, like, I guess just like having that like extra time to be able to like submit things. Cause say like you run out of time to do something, you don't want to like accidentally not have enough time to finish it. And then, you know, you wasted so much time working on it that you, you at the end you didn't um, like submit it. Um, I would also say to just like try, like you never know what, what'll happen. Awesome. So do you guys have any questions for Beatrice before she goes about this scholarship? I mean, I'll, I'll be giving you some more information, but do you have any more um, questions about advice about a scholarships or senior year for Beatrice since we have her here? What were some of your top schools? Uh, my top school was Princeton. Um, then I ranked Yale, UPenn, Duke, I think like Boston College and Haverford. Nice. And also I forgot to tell you guys that she's tied for number one in the class, but you don't have to be number one in the class because Basima Curry got it last year and I think she was number six. And I think Leo J might have been like number, he was between number five and 10. So they suggest that you are in the top five to 10% of the class for this particular scholarship. All right. What other questions do we have? How many scholarships do you recommend applying for? Like, I know you kind of, um, I guess, had your mindset on this one, but. I know some of them are like smaller where it wouldn't necessarily be a full ride. How, like, I mean, I know you've only done this once and you're not like an expert or anything, but do you have any advice about that? Um, I know like the bigger scholarships are definitely longer. So I would focus on like the bigger ones. Um, I'm not really sure about like smaller scholarships. And the bigger ones are usually due like in the summer and the fall around like now. So I'm going to give you guys some links so that you can start writing down the dates of these scholarships. And then that way you can start, um, you know, looking at them earlier. Because what, what the great thing about working with Beatrice through this whole process is that she is very organized. So we had a, how many meetings that we had? Maybe about six, seven, ten periodically. Oh, like and yeah, so she always... Pretty much, I didn't really have to tell her what to do. I asked her, okay, what are we doing next? You know, and so she would kind of plot out some things. And so she just kind of needed some assistance with maybe just some stuff that you guys in general just wouldn't know what certain terms are, certain things to do. Um, but she was always pretty organized and um, available. And so you have to definitely make sure you um, organize your time well. So somebody had a question in the chat that you saw. What was that question? Do we apply to scholarships before or after? Okay, so I'll answer that one a little bit later. All right, so one more, because I know Beatrice has to go and I want to make sure I get through this other stuff before you guys have to go at 11. So if you guys can just send her some warm greetings on here, some congratulations in the chat or something nice, some rah-rah for her, please, in the chat and we just like to thank you um beatrice for coming and just sharing and i probably have her on a little bit later on, at another time um but this is a, a phenomenal um award that you have received so congratulations thank you right. so we're gonna see which person on this list is gonna be the next one it doesn't have to be just one right all right all right, you guys. Have a nice day. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and fly through this um, presentation that I have for you so we can get you on to your next class. And then whatever questions that you have for her that we couldn't answer, we'll do it now. So you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have it on the last slide. Okay, so we talked about why it's important for you guys to get your own money. Okay, 
So we talked about that already. We had Miss Beatrice come. So college prep scholars, um, that is also connected to the Quest Bridge Scholarship. And so here's the website. And so if you guys are interested in applying for the Quest Bridge Scholarship, they also have something before that one. And it's called the College Prep Scholars Program. And so it's a summer program. And I'm going to share my screen and show you that. So with this summer program, um, it's a full scholarship to a college summer program at Yale, Notre Dame, University of Chicago, and more colleges. And so these scholarships, you know, are valued up to $20,000, which covers your travel, tuition, room, and board. And so I don't have time to go into this in detail, but the application is going to open in early February and the deadline to um, submit the application is March the 24th. And so if you do the College Prep Scholars Program, it will help you prepare for the QuestBridge application um, program. Actually, the application will actually just roll over. So I'll be talking to you guys um, again about this as a whole class, um, but I wanted to talk to you guys in detail because most of you in here um, or at least a number of you will be eligible for this. So, so if I were you, I will go on this website and then at the bottom, you can join their mailing list. So that's questbridge.org. Okay. So this is their summer program. All right. All right. The next thing is how do I strategize to get money for college? And so in order for you guys to get what they call merit scholarships, merit scholarships are scholarships that you receive from colleges based off of your grades, your test scores, your extracurricular activities. Sometimes they call it institutional scholarships. And so in most cases, you don't have to fill out an application for those because they will give them to you when you apply early. And then the college also has other scholarships on their website websites that you can apply to. And usually you want to go ahead and apply for those even before you get accepted. So any pages, um, website pages that you, I'm sorry, schools that you're going to apply to that are at the top of your list, you want to go straight to their scholarship pages to see when the deadlines are, because they will be like between now and let's say January, February, some of them March. Okay. So they're going to be looking at, again, your test scores, your grade point average, um, your activities, your essays, your letters of recommendations. And so they're going to be looking at clubs, sports. They're going to be looking at what kind of offices you held, how long you've been involved in them. Some of you might not have a lot of activities because you have some responsibilities at home. And now on the common application, they will ask you questions about if you have to babysit your siblings or if you have to work, because in the past, those things were held against you or you got penalized because you didn't have, you know, a whole list of things. But they do have some spaces on there for you guys to be able to list um, your activities other than, you know, clubs and sports. So your merit achievements, they're going to be looking at any honors classes, AP, VHS and the other things that we talked about. So they want to look at rigor when they give out these merit scholarships. They want to see um, how many challenging courses you have. So don't be afraid to get a C in an honors or AP class. Of course, we want you to get an A or a B, but we don't want you to not take it because you are afraid of getting a B or C in the class. They are advanced classes, and they want to see that you're doing advanced level work, OK? You also want to look at merit versus need-based scholarships, okay? So merit, we said, is based off of your work and your activities. Need-based scholarships are based off of the fact that you are a student that may be a low-income student and you need more money to go to school. And then some of you who are may be a low-income student but you are also a merit student. So you guys can take advantage of both of these options. OK, so if you do, let's say if you did get free or reduced lunch or you had to, you know, free or reduced lunch where you were in elementary school before everybody got free lunch, you may meet that criteria. If you are in um, upper bound program, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are one of those students that is at the top five to 10 percent of the class, you also want to Google colleges that are 100% need met. Those are predominantly private schools that will, if you get accepted, 
let's say for instance, if your family income for a family of four, and this is just a, a base number, if your family makes $65,000 or less a year, you can get full tuition, room, and board. If your family makes $120,000 or less for a family of four, and again, this is just a rough guide, you can get tuition taken care of. And some of these colleges won't even make you pay loans. So this is something that we can talk about later, but I want you to go ahead and start you know, noting that to research that now. Um, I have a Google Classroom that has a lot of information um, for you guys. Here's the code. And when I go through the rest of these slides, um, I'll go through that Google Classroom because I want to make sure I get through here for the people who have to go in a second. All right. So if you guys want to screenshot that, you can screenshot that or write it down real quick and go into this Google Classroom. I just literally put it together for you this morning. Scholarships, when you are looking for scholarships, you have your national scholarships versus your local scholarships. And so your local scholarships are the gold mines of scholarships. They might be the smaller ones that are $1,000 and $250, uh, $250 or $500 or $1,000. Sometimes they may be a couple of thousand, but they are only for students that are in Pennsylvania, Montgomery County, um, Norristown area, Philadelphia area, or Norristown High School. And so you're competing against less people. And so the odds are in your favor, you know, just like the Hunger Games made the odds forever be in your favor, minus all of the violence against children. All right. Maybe that wasn't the best example. Your national scholarships are going to be the ones that are the hardest and the odds are not in your favor. But again, we just saw Miss Beatrice who competed against 18,500 people. And so she got those scholarships. So you want to start looking at some of the larger ones. And so on your um, Google Classroom, I did put some samples of some larger ones in there. And then as we go along, I'll be adding more. OK. You want to make sure that you're trying to look at your SAT, ACT, AP, and subject test options. So again, this is something that I will be talking to you guys in much more detail about later. I have a special um, session just for this. Um, but it doesn't matter if you take the SAT or the ACT. Most of the colleges take both tests. And actually, some of the colleges next year will still be test optional. OK, so we'll give you guys some information to see who those colleges are. You need to take your AP tests if you are signed up for that. And some of you may want to consider taking some subject tests for some of those top tier colleges like Duke, Georgetown, Penn. Um, some of them, they can't require them, but they highly recommend that you do take subject tests and you do need to study way ahead of time um, to be able to take a subject test. And so I do have a booklet in your Google Classroom that goes into much detail about the subject test and all of the tests that you can take. So because you guys are all Norristown students, we are part of the free lunch national lunch program. You get waivers for the SAT, the ACT, and the subject test. Okay. And I'll send you that information too. And then the last slide I have is make an appointment to see me or to see your counselor. So on this link tree that you keep seeing on every page, that is the link um, to all of the links. Anything that I would advertise would be on there. So you can make an appointment to see me or to see your counselor so that we can start getting ready and prepping for you early. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um. Anybody who has to go real quick, do you have any questions before you go? I'll answer your questions before I go into the Google Classroom and then we'll be done. So I know some of you have SAT prep. All right, well, if you don't have any questions, I'm gonna keep going. I don't know why I stopped sharing my screen because the other thing has to be shared. So let me share my screen again for you guys. All right. So this is the um, the Google Classroom that I put together for you guys. Just put it together this morning. 
So on here, we have the links to all of the college and career events. So that's the link tree that I just put in there for you and it's saying it is not found. All right, so I need to fix that. But that has all of the websites um, for my uh, YouTube page, Instagram page, um, what, uh, my website, et cetera, et cetera. So in here, it's in here too. So my Twitter, YouTube, the website to that I have up on line. So anytime you go on here, any upcoming events that we have will be on this website. And I update this a couple of times a week. Okay. So, and then you can just click on here and it'll take you where you need to go. So for those of you who haven't been to our office hours, we just had one. Um, so the next one is going to be this coming Monday, I believe. All right. Um, there's also a page that I just updated this morning, but I'm continuing to update it. It's a scholarships page. All right. And it has information about the large scholarships that have passed, but at least you can go ahead and write down the dates, any upcoming ones. And as I find more, I'm going to put them here. If you have or are, are currently in foster care, there's some information there, athletics, if you are undocumented or if you are a DACA student, there's some information here, more to come. And then here's a whole list of general scholarships that you guys can do some research on. There's also a countdown to uh, graduation here where it goes by grade and tells you guys what you should be doing per grade. So that's some information that I have on my website. You can look at that later. I have a link for the most popular search engines Step Into College booklet, which is a wonderful booklet that we've been giving students for the last couple of years here at Narstown. And now it's fully digital. And it has some information in here about getting ready for college, right? And so you can go through here and research whatever you want. And you, it has a checklist in here as well. So you can just skip through here at your leisure. So that's on there as well. Um, we have scholarships for undocumented students, scholarships with lar large awards, the SAT subject test, and then the brag sheet that seniors use to give to their teachers so that they can get some more information about letters of recommendations. So again, it's your leisure. If you guys can go in here and check out this Google Classroom, here's the class code again. I'll try to see if I can invite you guys at in mass. Okay. And so in a nutshell, that's really all I wanted to talk to you guys about, but there are some bigger scholarships that I want you to look at that are on that list. Um, you have the uh, Jack Cook Kent Scholarship. You have the, um, um, the McDonald's ones, the Burger Kings, all those different types of scholarships. So I know I spent a lot of time on Crest, Quest Bridge. It's only because we have a lot of students that have gotten that one and they have a pre-program that you can do to get you ready. But again, I want you guys to believe that you as an individual can get these scholarships because you are worthy. You've been working hard. I, I don't want you to get the Narstown complex that people try to give us because they don't know. And in the great, in the words of the great philosopher, Biggie Smalls, when I tell my friends what we're doing at the school and they look and they gas and I say, if you don't know, now, you know, all right. I want you guys to be proud of your school. I want you to be proud of who you are. I want you to be proud of what you have accomplished. And so I need you guys to make sure that you reach out to me, that you reach out to your counselors. And as we put out information for you guys, for you guys to take advantage of it. And in the spring, I'm going to be having some more um, meetings. I'm actually going to be having some in the afternoons for you and your parents. I'm going to be doing a series called First Gen. And it's going to be predominantly for students that this you are the first person in your family to go to school or to go to college in a long time. It will be open to everybody. But there's a lot of people who have no idea of what the college application process is all about. And then there are some of you, everybody has a different route. So some of you may be doing the four year route. Some of you may be doing the two year community college route. Some of you are looking to get a one year certificate. Some of you are going into the military and some of you are working after high school. So we will meet with you all just to kind of gauge what it is that you want to do. 
All right, we just wanted to make sure we got some information in your hands, okay? So I'm done. So I don't know if you guys have any questions. So I know you guys have things to do and places to go. Any questions, you can either unmute yourself or you can drop them in the chat. So let me answer that one question that was in here. So somebody said, do we apply for scholarships before or after you are accepted into schools? For those private scholarships, you guys can apply for those at any time. And actually there are some scholarships out there now that you can apply for as juniors. So you wanna Google scholarships for juniors. So the, the key websites that you wanna go on, and this is on the website that I have there is raise.me, fast web, college opportunity scholarships from for the college board. And again, this is in the Google Classroom. It's all in one big folder for you. And, um, you know, my scholars. So there's a whole list of them that you can start doing some searches and have, have them to send you stuff. Unigo.com is a really good one too. All right. So any more questions? So I'm not going to hold you guys hostage. All right. Well, if you guys don't have any questions, thank you so much for coming um, to this meeting and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys again soon. All right. I'm going to stop. And if thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good day.